there. My name is Corinne O'Flynn, and you're listening to the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. I am a USA Today bestselling author, nonprofit executive, and organizing nerd with over 20 years experience running my own small businesses. I teach entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, and small business owners like you how to organize your business, find more time, and deepen your alignment practice to experience more calm and confidence every single day. If you're looking for that intersection between practical business advice and spiritual goodness, then you're in the right place. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into this week's episode of the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. Welcome, welcome to the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Corinne O'Flynn, and this is episode 10. Have you ever felt stuck in a particular choice and wondered if it was too late to change direction? It's a common enough thing, thinking that you're stuck. But the truth is that it's never too late to change direction and pursue something new. But that's easy enough to say, right? Because making a decision to change can be really hard, especially when the stakes are high. When we choose a path, we invest time and money and energy into it. But when we realize that we've chosen poorly, Those sunk costs alone can start to feel like a prison in and of themselves, right? That sense that we're too far in can feel really stifling. It can make it feel like we can't shift out, like there's just no way to go. But there may come a time when you realize that you have no choice but to pivot. And maybe that time when it arrives, it it arrives as a feeling. It could be a feeling of increased stress and unease, or maybe your energy is completely sapped whenever you sit down to do your work. Maybe the signs aren't that subtle at all and you realize that you've just lost your fire for what used to be your thing. And maybe it has nothing at all to do with how you feel, and it's more about things that are showing up in your balance sheet or in the way that your customers are responding or You know, maybe a strategy that you were using just isn't working anymore. However it comes, the knowledge that we've made a wrong decision can be a really hard pill to swallow. But all is not lost. Because I am a true believer in the fact that pivoting is sometimes the smartest and sometimes even the only right move. Because when the path that we've chosen is not leading us where we want to go, it's okay to pivot. It's okay to change directions even when that is a really scary thing. So I'm speaking to you from experience because this is something that happened to me over the last several years. And in fact, this podcast is the outcome of, you know, the latest iteration of changes. And I'll share that story with you. So as briefly as I possibly can, in 2018, I started a new pen name and I was invited to join this, this author group. And we were a a large group of authors and we were doing uh, short novellas and we were releasing in um, groups in, in themes every month we would have a theme. So for example, one would be like, you know, where it's spring break. One is it's, it's Valentine's day. And so we would all write stories that had that as the theme even though they weren't necessarily connected to each other. But what we were doing was we were we would release once a month. And that was great because they were short stories and it was this wonderfully fun thing and it was really fabulous until it wasn't. There came a point about a year in where we were exhausted. Our readers were exhausted. We had a fantastic reader group. Everything was going swimmingly until it kind of hit a wall. And this is in 2019. So this is even before the pandemic. But at the end of that, I started feeling like I was coming into a burnout. And I wasn't really sure. I didn't call it burnout at the time. I wasn't sure what was going on, but I felt like, oh, okay, you know what? This isn't this isn't working. This isn't feeling the way that it used to feel. But I'll tell you that the money was really juicy at the time. It was one of those things where we had kind of hit a lightning strike and the algorithms are working for us and social media was working for us. And we had this fantastic reader group because this is back when Facebook groups were, were rocking and rolling and the sky was the limit. And then it, it wasn't. And it, and for me, it was a personal thing. It was just, I couldn't sustain this any longer. And I was no longer getting the hit 
out of it that I was getting at the start. So I knew that something had to change. And for me, when that did change, the first thing I did was pull back. But then we had the pandemic and then we had like the world changed and we were pivoting left, right and center, right? The whole world was pivoting. And I realized during that period of time that one of the things that I had changed in my life was that I had stopped showing up in a service capacity. And that sounds like a strange thing, but there, it was this the a, a, a journey of self-discovery to get to that point where I realized that was what the thing was. But I had managed to burn myself out in my work to the point where I was like, oof, I need to just not participate anymore in social media and show up the way that I had been because I was just wiped out. And then the pandemic happened and it became easy to really become a hermit, right? And holy cow, I stayed at home for, I I had no in, inclination to leave the house. And then once the world started opening back up again, I still did not want to open, like I did not want to step back into the world. I was really enjoying this quietness until I wasn't. And that showed up as, you know, depression and a little bit of anxiety and not really understanding what was going on. And so through conversations with friends and really digging deep into what was going on, what was I feeling this way? What was the message that I was receiving from all the different places in in my life and my work and my family? And it was that I had stopped serving. And, you know, it's, it's such a huge part of my life. And I have a nonprofit actually that is a hundred percent volunteer. And it's, I do a lot of giving back in that way, but during the pandemic that stopped too. And I volunteer with my boys uh, in the Boy Scouts and that stopped. And so all these different outlets that I had for giving back had, had closed down and it took a really long time for me to realize that. And once I realized that I was like, whoa, this is like so unexpected. How am I going to move forward? And I realized that what I wanted to do was give back in a different way, in a new way. I didn't want to reopen those those doors necessarily the way they had been opened before. Yeah, I was interested in, in, in the scouts still. And I was interested in, of course, in my nonprofit support work. But the thing that I wanted was going to be something new. And I didn't know what that was. I just knew that it had to be something new. And I did a lot of deep diving and I realized that I want to turn the thing that I am most tapped for into a business. So when I got involved in a coaching program and one of the first things they ask is, you know, how do you find your, how do you find your thing? Um, And I realized that, you know, being organized and having systems and helping people run their business is something that I have been doing as a side thing, just because it's where my zone of genius is for a really long time. But it's just been a thing that I've been done, you know, to help people. And so I decided to turn that into a business. And when I first did that, I launched a funnel. And what that was, was a bunch, a series of workbooks. And they were about organizing your time. And they were about morning routines. And they were about um, managing your goals and, you know, digital clutter and all these different things. And I was going to turn those things into courses and I was going to, you know, pursue world domination through sales funnels. And as soon as I launched it and I launched it well, I thought, you know, it did well. I, I made some sales. It was received well. The feedback was excellent. But as soon as I launched it, like literally as soon as it went live and I was like, yay, hey guys, I'm open for business. This is a thing. As soon as I did that, I realized I made the wrong decision, (laughs) but, but it wasn't fully wrong. Like there was something about it that was right. And I had called it the calm entrepreneur. And I was like, I don't know what about this isn't working. It just wasn't hitting. Meanwhile, I'm still writing and I'm still doing my, my author gig. And, you know, that's a full-time business. and. I'm trying to figure out like, oh my gosh, I just spent the better part of like, you know, eight months developing this, this business. 
And I realized like, whoa, this is just so not right. So I had to kind of go back to the drawing board. And I realized that I didn't need to scrap it. What I needed to do was pivot. And so that's what I did. And so I I decided that I still needed to keep the calm entrepreneur was a thing and it was my thing, but it wasn't the only thing. And so I tried to figure out how that looked and what that ended up being was, you know, I was taking my own brand and making myself the brand, Corinne O'Flynn, right? And the calm entrepreneur is is a suite of things happening within the brand. So it's my podcast, The Calm Entrepreneur with Corinne O'Flynn, but it's also my community and it's going to be the umbrella under which I launch my my upcoming courses. And it was an interesting shift because I had done so much work. I had developed so much content and I had really invested so much time and energy and money into rolling it out the way that I had only to like shut it down as soon as it went live. And it was like, whoa. So there was an element of embarrassment there because I was like, my gosh. And I wrote this email to like my email list, which I had been developing over the course of that. And I was like, guys, you know, I almost didn't want to write this email because I, this isn't, this isn't what I thought it should be. And of course, everybody who was on my list was super duper supportive and all of my friends and people that I don't know were like, you know what? That's great. This is groovy. I'm here for you. I'm really interested in what you're doing. You know, I can't wait to see what happens. And so I was like, okay, so here I go. And then I realized what I wanted to do was what I'm doing now. So podcasting, this is, this is service. This is, this is filling me in the place where service fills me. I really enjoy giving back. I really enjoy telling stories. I really enjoy sharing information and making it digestible and putting my spin on stuff. Like I really do believe that the calm entrepreneur, the calm piece is, is the important piece. Like, yeah, we're all entrepreneurs, but we're people and we have lives. And, you know, I'm choosing to focus on people who are running businesses, but, you know, maybe you're not, maybe you're aspiring to run a business. The important piece of what I want to do is the calm piece. And I think that my zone of genius is helping people get their, their stuff in a pile and making a system and organizing in a way that works for them that is not prescriptive. I'm really big on, on not making it prescriptive. I think that one of, the, one of the things that is wrong with a lot of the trainings that are available out there is, and not, you know what, I should take that back. It's not that they're wrong. It's the thing that makes them not fit is because they're cookie cutter. and. Or they're not necessarily cookie cutter, but they're one size fits all. And I don't believe that any solution out there is truly one size fits all. And that makes it really challenging when talking about things like goal setting or, you know, organizing your, your, your digital clutter or, you know, figuring out how you're going to tame all the information that you're, that you're gathering in your day to day, because The thing that works for me might not be the thing that works for you. And the business that you're working on isn't the same business that I'm working on. You know, I have a podcast, maybe you have a blog and, or maybe you have an Etsy shop or maybe you have no idea what you're doing and you're trying to develop it. So the, the one size fits all approach is not something that I feel has been fruitful. It hasn't been fruitful for me. And it hasn't been fruitful for a lot of the people that I, that I work for because they, people take on a new system and it doesn't work and it's just too rigid. It's too prescriptive. So I believe that it's important to find the ways to bend all these different systems and find the things and explore and create the buffet and allow you to give yourself permission to pick and choose and all these things. So my pivot ended, ended up with me here with a podcast where I am serving and I, you know, hopefully the things that I'm sharing are serving you. Um, you know, of course not every topic is going to hit with everyone, but my goal is to give back and, you know, being, doing a podcast was exciting for me because it's not something I've done before. Initially I thought I was going to do blogging, but I was so tired of writing all the time. So I wanted to try something new, which is interesting. And I laugh at myself because I'm spending a lot of time, you know, writing my notes and and putting my scripts together for my podcast, which is a lot of writing. So 
I don't know that I saved any any time or energy with not blogging uh, because, you know, six and one half dozen of the other, I guess, when it comes right down to it. But anyway, so the moral of my story and the reason why I share it with you is because it was a hard, hard won victory to get here and to get here with a smile on my face and to get here with the support of my people and trusting that that was going to be there because it's a scary thing to do. It's like, I didn't want to look flaky. I didn't want to look like I was starting and stopping. Like I didn't want to be judged for that, especially when what I'm trying to do is teach you to how to make a system and how to organize your business. And I'm looking like I'm kind of going bananas over here. So anyway, all of that to say that it's sometimes a pivot is the only way forward. And something that I want to make clear here is that pivoting doesn't always mean cutting bait and bailing because, you know, in my story in particular, I had done a lot of writing of content. I had books I put together and programs and trainings, and I flipped a lot of that stuff around. And some of that has turned into podcast content. Some of that is getting put into a course, actually three courses that I'm developing, you know, and So it's not like it's a waste of energy, but even if I didn't use any of the things that I had developed, the learning there is really important. So I want to make it clear that pivoting doesn't always mean bailing. It can mean shifting. It can mean changing one aspect of your work. It can mean removing something or adding something. It can mean delegating, but it can also mean scrapping everything and starting over. So whatever pivoting looks like for you, the next time you find yourself facing the need for a change, I wanted to share some of my thoughts that I took away from my own experiences and in the hopes that maybe it makes it a little easier for you to give yourself permission to make that change when the time comes. So I have three main things that I wanted to share in support of why it's okay to pivot. And the first one is that it's never too late to change direction. Just because you've invested your time and your money and your effort into a particular path does not mean that you have to continue down that path. It's never too late to pivot and change direction, even if it does mean starting over. In fact, many successful people have made drastic changes in their careers later in life, you know, and I imagine that really felt daunting, but it's sometimes it's the pivot that led them to success. And some people you know, who comes to mind is like Julia Child was older. Actually, this is uh, somebody who made a change when they were older. And also another person who did it when they were older was Colonel Sanders. He was in his 60s when he decided to franchise his business. So it's never too late to change directions. And lifelong learning is really important. And I talked about this in some previous episodes about how important it is to just always chase that learning, you know, especially in today's changing world. Everything is changing. Like, and now we have AI and it's like, it feels like AI has disrupted everything. It's the thought of AI has disrupted everything even before it's actually truly caused disruption, I think. So the world is changing rapidly and it's changing right around us, right in front of our eyes. And being a lifelong learner is more important now than it ever was before. So the skills and the knowledge that are in demand today may not be relevant in a few years. And that's that's a hard one, right? That's like a whoo hard one to take. But, you know, knowing that you can change direction and pursue something new and that you can continue to develop and learn new skills, you know, that can be valuable. So, you know, keep in mind that like, you know, you're always learning, always be learning. Personal growth and fulfillment are are an important part of our lives. And I I think that we sometimes look at success in a very binary way, either, you know, you're making money or you're not. And it really can't be just about that. It has to be about purpose and meaning. And I think that personal growth and fulfillment are a key to living a happy and meaningful life. If you're not happy with your current path, it's important to take steps to change direction and find something that brings you joy and fulfillment. And that can be something small or something huge. It it really doesn't need to be this all or nothing kind of a concept, right? Because the world needs people who are willing to make changes. Like 
Everything is evolving. We are constantly moving and we need to make sure that we can contribute in meaningful ways to the world. Like you are here for a reason, you know, and you're not here for one reason. If the thing that you were doing is no longer your thing, then find the next thing that you're here to do. I, I believe that, you know, just like learning is an iterative process, I think that our development is an iteration. And I think that we need to allow ourselves to iterate in our lives. So by pursuing something new, you can develop like this, this zest for, for the new thing you know, and pursue that and change the world. And then when the time comes to do it again, do it again. Right. And I also would like to, to, to hammer home that pivoting or then discovering that you need to pivot, you know, doesn't always mean that there's a mistake made, but what if you have made a mistake? Like mistakes are opportunities. And that's the thing I, the second thing I wanted to talk about, like this, this need for a pivot is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for learning, right? And if it's a mistake, that's a thing we all do, right? We all make them and we can all learn from them. But if you realize that you've moved in the wrong direction, this is an opportunity to learn and use that knowledge to make a better decision in the future, right? Reassess what it is that you used to make that choice. And, you know, maybe the choice wasn't bad, but the world changed right? Maybe the situation is different. And now the criteria that you used to make that decision actually have changed. So there's a lot of ways to assess why you need to make that change. And if that is coming to you because you made a mistake, hey, that's, you know what, that's a part of life. And while it can be frustrating, mistakes are valuable opportunities. Like there are some reasons why mistakes can be the best opportunities because they provide feedback. They give us feedback about what went wrong. They can be really valuable in helping us improve our skills and avoid making that same mistake in the future. Like anytime you find that you've, you need to pivot and you sit down with that, there's going to be a part of you that feels that in your body somewhere. And if you pay attention to that feeling and you learn what that feeling is, well, the next time it happens, you're going to understand what's happening. You won't have to go on that discovery journey. You won't have to waste time wondering because you know, but mistakes aren't necessarily negative. They mistakes lead to innovation, right? Post-it notes. One of my favorite things in the whole wide world, post-it notes were invented when a 3M researcher accidentally created a weak adhesive. So that's a mistake that turned into something fantastic for all of us. Like, I don't know if, if, if post-it notes bring you as much joy as they bring me, but you know, I'm grateful for that mistake and mistakes make us more resilient, right? It can be so easy to feel discouraged and frustrated. And if you do, if you find that you are looking down the lane and you're saying, oh, I, you know, I chose poorly. I need to, I need to make a shift. I need to pivot. I do not want you to feel discouraged or frustrated or ashamed. I want you to embrace it, right? We learn from it. We become more resilient and we become better equipped to handle the future. That's resilience. You know, like once you do it, you can do it again. Mistakes can be humbling but they can also lead to growth and development. And by reflecting on our mistakes and learning from them, we can become more self-aware, more empathetic to other people who are going through their own changes, right? And we become more effective at navigating all the challenges that in our life and in our business. And the third thing that I wanted to talk about with regard to my support for pivoting is that, you know, life is short and it's really unpredictable. No matter how well we plan, we can't predict anything that's going to come, right? We can, we can roll the dice and make, make an educated guess, but circumstances can change and things can happen that we never anticipated. And it's important to be flexible and willing to pivot whenever necessary to adapt. So being open to change can lead to new opportunities that we never would have considered otherwise. Because at the end of the day, Happiness should be the ultimate goal. If the path that we've chosen is not making us happy, then something's wrong, right? And it's time to pivot and find the new path. And life is too short. And I talk about, 
you know, that fleeting sensation of life from time to time. My mom died when I was in my twenties and she was, she was my age. She was 51 years old. And that's, that's how old I am when she passed away. She had actually just turned 51. So she was 50 during her illness and she turned 51 and then she passed away shortly thereafter. And I think about that a lot, especially now because I'm the age that she was and life's too short. You guys like it's too short to waste on something that doesn't bring us joy. So if there's a way to pivot and change direction and find a path that aligns with our values and brings us happiness and also sustains us financially, I think that you should do it. So I'm, I'm, if you want me to talk you out of it, like you need to call somebody else because I will never be the person who does that for you. <laughs> I am all about like, you know, follow your bliss, follow your bliss. Because it's just, it's okay to realize that you've chosen poorly. So what do you do when you realize you need to pivot? How do you face a pivot once you've decided that you have to make a change? So step one, identify the problem, right? The first step to changing out of a bad situation is identifying the problem. Take some time to reflect on what's not working. Make a list of the things that are working. Identify the problem. And then you can start developing a plan for how to address it right? Because it might not require burning it down. It might be something smaller, something simpler, something nuanced that makes all the difference in the world. Step two, evaluate your options. Once you've identified the problem, you have to figure out what your choices are. How can you improve? Is there anything you can do to keep everything the way that it is, but change the thing that's causing you pain? Could it be that you need to actually, you know, hire somebody new? Does it need to be that you have to change the way that your strategy is working or, you know, is uh, an entire product line going to have to be scrapped? Whatever it is, you need to evaluate your options mindfully, you know, and sit down and take some time, like schedule some time for this one and talk to the people around you and talk to the people in your industry and talk to your friends and your family and brainstorm, right? There's no wrong answers when it comes to the evaluation process. and once. Once you figure out what you're going to do, set some goals. This will help you stay focused and motivated as you work out of bad situation into the good situation, right? Think about what you want. Think about how you want to feel. Think about the challenges that are coming and how you're going to find yourself some support for that new thing, right? So write down your goals and make a plan. The next right steps, the next right steps, the next right steps. And then once you've identified the next right steps, you have to take action, right? And only you know what that's going to be. For me, it was sending out an email to everyone saying, hey guys, okay, so false alarm. This isn't what I thought it was going to be, you know, gone fishing back in a minute. And then I, I, I shut it down, flipped it around and I came back. So you get to decide and you need to do that. I think transparently, the more you share, I think that the the amount of support you get from your people is going to buoy you and it's going to give you um, excitement and it's going to actually build your community in a way that maybe wasn't there before. So that's something that has been a wonderful byproduct of my being really open about this, this shift that I've made um, this past year because it took a lot of vulnerability. It took a lot of uh, really just letting go of that sense of embarrassment and shame and being real and being like, Hey guys, like this is, this is so not what I wanted to do. Um, and I'm changing it up and here's, here's what I'm doing. So, and I'll tell you that once I made the decision, once I really sat with it and, um, evaluated my options and set some goals and started taking action, the momentum that I felt was unreal. Like it, felt like the difference between, you know, trying to climb uphill on skis versus like jumping in the gondola. Like I felt like I had a machine behind me. I had this momentum. I had this, this energy pushing me forward and it was wonderful. And that's, that's how I knew that I was on the right track. And it's something that I have felt before, but I wouldn't have known to seek it. But once it happened, I was like, oh yeah, okay. This is what it feels like when I'm doing the right thing. So 
take action. That's the next thing. And then once you start taking action, you need to prioritize self-care. And that's a really, really big one. Changing out of one situation into a new situation can be stressful for all the things, for all the reasons that I have shared from everything from, you know, tossing out sunk costs to the feeling of wasted energy and, and money to being vulnerable. And having to admit, because, you know, if you're operating in a business as an entrepreneur, especially these days, you're online, like the world is watching. So it's like, you can't do this stuff like in secret, like it's all happening out loud. And self-care is a huge, huge factor in you coming out the other side successful. So would that be bubble baths and facials or, you know, meeting friends for coffee And setting yourself a bedtime and sleeping in on the weekends, making time for self care, you know, you must. It has to be part of your action plan. It has to be part of your action plan. So surround yourself with positive, supportive people, and you will navigate the changes that you need to make. So there you go. So some mindsets. My favorite thing in the whole wide world mindset is everything, right? If you embark on a pivot, Remember to stay open-minded. Having an open mind is crucial when it comes to pivoting in your life. It's important to be willing to consider new ideas, new perspectives, new possibilities, and be receptive to change. By being open-minded, you explore new opportunities until you find the path that's right for you. And I promise you that if you find yourself in a position where you need to pivot and you take the time to really explore all the different options, Once you start moving in the different directions and take some actions, you'll know right away if it's the right move. And if you get to that place where you're like, ooh, not sure, then back it up and start something different. Take the, uh, like, if you have like five options in front of you, like these are the, these are the five next steps that I can take that'll, that'll put me in these different directions. If, if option A doesn't feel like it's fitting, try option B, like stay open-minded and of course stay flexible, right? Flexibility is key when it comes to pivoting. It's important to take on an adaptive mindset. You have to know that you're in flux, right? You have goals. You just decided that you were going to shift out of something that felt a little bit like you were locked in. And now you're locking yourself into something new. Like you can't, you have to be flexible. You have to kind of inch forward and kind of ease forward and like peek around the corner and try to see, okay, is this it? Is this it? Because if it isn't, you need to pivot again. And that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. But just be prepared for that and and make that part of the strategy. Make that part of the plan. Cultivate resilience mindfully. So pivoting can be super duper challenging, right? And it's important to go into it knowing that you can overcome these obstacles. You can do hard things. You can persevere through difficult times, right? When you build resilience, you build that, that voice that says you can bounce back from anything. Like a setback is just a setback. That's not, that's not like the end. Like setbacks are called, are, are cul-de-sacs. I was trying to make that all quippy and and fabulous and I stumbled. Setbacks are cul-de-sacs. When you are resilient, everything lets you big bounce. You, You slingshot back through and you move forward towards your goals. Like There's no such thing as a setback when you're on fire for something. You're just going to try and try and try and try again. And that requires embracing a growth mindset. This is going back to episode one of our 10 episode podcast. Can you believe we're in 10 10 episodes by now? A growth mindset means believing that your abilities and your intelligence can be developed through hard work and dedication. You are not born with it. You can build it. by having a growth mindset. This means you view these challenges and these failures and these needs for change as opportunities for growth and learning and being willing to take on those risks and try those new things. And the last of my mindsets is staying present and really being self-aware. So self-awareness is a really important thing to have when pivoting. It's really important to have a clear understanding of your strengths and your weaknesses and your values and your goals, because all of those things are what you use to make the informed decisions that help you stay true to yourself as you navigate change. And, you know, this goes back to like this, this, the central core of what 
being a calm entrepreneur is all about. It's, it's about being yourself. It's about staying true and aligned while also plotting world domination through the thing, the service that you're bringing to the world. So self-awareness and staying present is invaluable. It's, it's probably, it should be number one, but it's the last one. So maybe I saved the best for last on that one. So pivoting can be challenging and scary and uncertain. And I want you to recognize that it's normal to feel scared. And I want you to acknowledge and recognize that these feelings are natural and expected. And you can, you can grow and, and learn to cope with them, right? Focusing on your own goals and priorities will help you stay out of that fear and worry about what others might be thinking, right? And this is a big one for me because I was like, oh my God, like here I am trying to teach people how to organize their business. And I just completely like shot myself out of a cannon, you know, into, into a whipped cream pie. Like it did not happen the way that I thought it was going to happen. So, hey, and I'm still here and I'm actually, you know, I'm much more powerful for it. I am so much stronger for just, you know, rolling with it and and laughing at myself and moving forward and sharing with vulnerability and truth. So, you know, remember this is your life and you have the right to make the decisions that are best for you. And sometimes that really does mean shaking it all out and making a change. Seek support from others. While it's important to focus on our own goals, it's really important to have support. And this doesn't mean you need to be like, you know, hanging it out like laundry on the line for everybody to consume. You know, find your circle. I have a circle and it's the most wonderful thing ever, ever. And it's, it surprises me because it's difficult for me to ask for help. I don't ask for help. I'm the one helping everybody else, right? So, you know, talk about trust fall. That's one of those things like, like putting it out there, being vulnerable and then being quick being caught, like landing in, in safe arms. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So seeking support from others is important. Practice self-compassion, right? Making pivots can be really, really difficult and challenging. So make sure that you prioritize self-compassion and you make that part of your strategy. Like put it on your calendar once a week, twice a week, once a day, whatever that takes. Self-care is not a luxury, right? And reframe your thinking. If you find that you're worried about things, if you're worried about how people are going to think, you're worried about you making the wrong decision again, you're worried about like, well, I just pivoted. Now I'm making another pivot and I'm not sure, you know, keep on trucking. I think that the opportunities come from the action, right? It's kind of leaping first and the net and the nets are going to appear for you. And we make our own luck in that way. So I'm really, um, I'm really going to push push on that one. Like you have to make sure that you focus on, on the benefits that might come because of the strategy that you're setting, because of the goals that you want without really necessarily hanging on the outcome. Cause that's, you know, that's part of life, the unpredictability. So the worst thing that you can do is look back at your life with regret for not pursuing those things that you really wanted. Regret for staying in a situation that's no longer working right? The status quo when it's working is a beautiful thing, but when it's time for a change, I think it's always worth evaluating and investigating where that pull is coming from, right? What is it that's pulling you away from what you're doing and whispering to you that you need to change? And whether that's something as simple as changing up your marketing strategy in your current business or taking on a new team member or scrapping a product so you have room and bandwidth to start over completely, You know, I will always be a supporter of pivoting because, you know, life's too short, you guys. And if, if we're here to serve and to give back and, you know, and to make money and to be successful and to attain and to achieve, what's the point if you're not in love with what you're doing, right? If it doesn't really, really feel good, I think that, you know, I'm not sure that that's, that's where I want to be. So. Anyway, that's all I've got for you this week. Thank you so much for listening. I went on way longer than I thought I was going to, but um, if you're still here, thanks for listening and I will catch you next week. Remember, 
Part of being a calm entrepreneur is developing the systems, habits, and know-how that lets you know that you are the one in the driver's seat. You get to choose how you run your business and you get to choose how you work. So you got this. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm Corinne O'Flynn, and if this episode was valuable to you, please head on over and rate and review wherever you consume your podcasts. Please subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. New episodes go out each week on Tuesdays, and I look forward to hanging with you again. This is Corinne signing off. Have an excellent day.